Hi, it's Pete and Jeff from Akai here in the Akai Development Lab. We're excited to show you what's arriving in the next MPC update. It's another release packed with powerful new features that will help you make music. We have some massive improvements to automation in your MPC. You can input, edit and view automation in lanes in the grid editor. And you can also step sequence automation parameters, which is a really fun way to add movement to your track. MPC has a new export option. You can now save your project as an Ableton Live project in their ALS format. We've enhanced the standalone mixer capabilities with eight new submix buses. And those are just the headlines. We've also added a whole load of workflow enhancements, including quicker insert effect selection, simple sample save straight from the sampler, various workflow improvements, including in sequence edit and time correct. Let's take a look in more detail. Automation has seen some major improvements in the standalone MPC experience, and it's now really cool. You can input, edit, and view automation in lanes in our MIDI grid editor, and also in the audio editor. This makes those on-screen editors massively more powerful. Open the grid and reveal the automation lane by tapping the up arrow on the parameter bar. This defaults to showing note velocities for MIDI tracks, but you can now click to reveal a menu of all the parameters that have already been automated or add a new parameter lane. Tap the pencil tool and draw in a single event or drag with your finger to enter a series of events. Use the erase tool to knock out events or the trash can icon to remove them all. You can now input, edit and view automation in the step sequencer. By default, the step sequencer's parameter field displays velocity. However, you can now change this field to display any of the parameters that have been automated on the current track. Let's begin by recording an automation parameter in real time. I'm going to use a tube synth patch playing a simple part. Setting the automation button to right and moving a Q-Link control writes automation into the sequencer. As you're writing automation, the step sequencer will display the automation for the current parameter, giving you clear visual feedback. To remove automation, you can hold Shift and push either the Clear Auto F key or the Clear Bar F key. You can also manually draw in automation. Double tap the parameter field to show the drop down menu. From the drop down menu, choose the Add New option. Then select a parameter to create an empty automation lane. You can now freely draw in automation using a touch-drag gesture. As you adjust the step via the touch UI or a link, the value of the step is displayed in the top right-hand corner of the parameter field. You can experiment with your automation pattern by nudging events using the left and right arrows. The nudge operation is performed at the current timing correct value. The step sequencer's Q-Link screen mode emulates a traditional knob-based step sequencer, giving you tactile control of each step. In this example, the TC is set to a 16th note and the Q-Links give tactile control of steps 1 to 16, making it easy to tweak a bar's worth of automation. You can use the slider on the right-hand side of the step sequencer to increase or decrease the value of all of the automation steps for the visible time range. You can now input preset shapes such as saw, square or triangle waveforms into the step sequencer. For any automation parameter, draw in some automation using a touch-drag gesture. Now press the presets button and push one of the saw, square or triangle buttons to quickly transform the existing automation to the shape of the preset. Pushing a preset button multiple times will cycle through faster variations of the shape. Ableton Live Set Export is a fun addition that allows you to take your MPC beats further. It allows you to save the current MPC sequence as an Ableton Live ALS project file. In main mode, press the folder icon to go to the project info page and select the ALS export function key. This is a powerful export. You can choose to render plug-in drum or key group tracks as audio clips if you want to preserve the sound of the instruments, or to export them as plain MIDI clips. 
For the audio bounce, you can usefully choose to include or bypass the volume pan and insert effects, and you can set the audio tail, the bit depth, and the sample rate. There are a lot of small improvements in 2.6 that will make your MPC more fun and more productive. The standalone mixer now contains the same eight submix buses as the desktop MPC. This allows you to route multiple tracks or drum pads into a single audio insert chain, giving you greater processing flexibility. In MPC Sampler, after recording a sample, the Keep or Discard Sample pop-up now has function keys to directly save or edit your new sample. Within Sequence Edit's Copy Events pop-up, you can now copy the events from individual or multiple pads. Tap the pads for which events you want to copy, those pads turn red, and the pads field now changes from all to display your selected pads. We've made it easier to navigate your internal Akai and Air insert effects. They're now split into groups named by function. You can now dig specifically into delays and reverbs, dynamic processes, EQs and filters, harmonic effects, modulation effects, and the classic Akai MPC Vintage emulators. If you want, you can also sort the list into a second group level by manufacturer. TC can now be applied to all tracks. Open the TC pop-up and use the All Track F key to apply the current TC settings to all MIDI tracks. There are a number of other minor workflow tweaks and visual improvements, including a reworked mode menu and other sequence edit improvements. That's MPC 2.6. It's coming soon and will be available for Windows, Mac OS, and your standalone MPC X and MPC Live. Stay tuned for more updates. We've got plenty of exciting stuff coming in the next few months. Thank you for watching.